What's up, nerds? Hey! Gauze Master here with another magic puzzle quest. Today's quest, we're going to open some packs and I'm going to show you something really special. Jace Mirror Mage. Oh my gosh, this card is amazing. But before we get to that, let's play a little game I like to call... Oh, what's in the box? Every week they give us a new set of cards inside the premium packs. I'm going to be real quick on these because there's some really good cards in here, but not in Kaladesh. I don't think there's any cards in here worth chasing at all. So Eldraine, this is standard, gonna be standard for a while. I'm doing a lot of things where I'm testing new engines. I've been testing a lot of the meta. Two chase cards in here that I see as of right now that are absolute must-haves. Number one is Fires of Invention. Fires of Invention, 12, 13 mana, red, four shield, enchantment. Whenever you cast the second card on your turn, disable all cards in your hand until the end of turn. At the beginning of your turn, reduce the cost of each card in your hand by X until the end of turn. X is the number of gems of your Planeswalker's colors. With a tricolor walker on the board or a tool color walker on the board, this card is fire. Get it? See what I did there? <laughs> okay. So Fires of Invention is a really powerful card if you can get it. The other one I think right now is a, is a chase card is Linden, the Steadfast Queen. Eight mana for a leader uh, for humans and knights. So any human, any knight, she can qualify as a leader for we can break her with Volrath and with uh, the new green one. I forget what it is. And she's eight mana for a 2-2. And we can pump her up whenever this creature attacks X, uh, gain X life. X is this creature's reinforcement. So she gains life. She stacks. She can get beefed up with Volrath. All kinds of good things. Two definite chase cards there. So you got two, one out of five is the options for there. For Ikoria, this one's always a doozy. Urgent Ultimatum is always a chase card. Any of the ultimatums, I got to admit, though, I don't play with this one very much. Although, if you get this and you don't have the other ultimatums, the better ultimatums, this is definitely a great card. 20 mana, blue, black, green, spell card. Fetch the first four different mono-colored cards from your library. Those cards gain full mana, then exile this card. Exile a random multicolored card, a mono-colored card from your hand, and disable each other card from your hand until end of turn. I just don't like that ability, but it's a great way to... It's a, it's a poor man's Genesis Ultimatum. Let's just put it that way. Genesis Ultimatum is much better. I'm building a deck right now with Luminous Broodmoth. It still needs some testing before I go live with it, but I'm actually really impressed with it. Broodmoth may be a chase card once you see what I'm doing with it. And then, of course, we've got Ruinous Ultimatum, best eliminator in the game, 22. It's uh, white, black, and red. Destroy each opposing creature and each opposing non-land support. This effect can affect Vanguard supports. It's just a thorough nuke their side of the board can't say enough great things about it song of creation eight mana okay blue red green support card enchantment when you draw a card the first land support in each hand each turn it gains full mana when you cast a non-land card draw two cards resourceful five. Oh, it's a non-land card the first card in your hand gains three mana for each other card in your hand at the end of your turn discard all but the first uh card from your hand so they nerfed this card a bit and i gotta be honest with you Song of Creation is not as strong as it was last meta. It's still very strong. However, I'm finding in my builds, in my early testing, that fires can be a little bit better. It's a little clunkier, but it works. Why this is so important to note is that Song of Creation works really well as long as you make this adjustment. You don't used to be able to just cast fires and it would start the combo. Yay! It doesn't do that anymore. You have to cast Song and another card. So you have to mute this card in your hand, mute a secondary card, get it with enough mana so that you're confident it will cast, then you cast both uh, one right after the other. The other, So you gotta cast Song and then the secondary card and then it triggers all of the other stuff. Still great, don't get me wrong, still works really well that way, but it's a little trickier. The second thing that makes Song of Creation weaker right now in this meta is all of the land cards. You'll notice that uh, when, you, uh, when you cast a non-land card, then draw two cards. With all these uh, land cards from Zendikar Rising, you wind up having you know, some cards you're going to be casting that aren't going to trigger this ability. And that's fooled me several times where I'm thinking, oh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to do well, let's start my combo. It doesn't go because I cast a land card to start the trigger and you have to be mindful of it. Now, that said, there's a lot of great cards that have land forming. Spell cards or creatures that have land forming definitely do those ones. will trigger this fine and it works well. Again, still probably the best card in meta right now and standard currently. However, it also is not good for all occasions where before it was just throw it in with Tamiyo, Vanguard, and you're good to rock and roll. Vadrock Apex of Thunder 
Absolutely chase card, 15 mana, all those things. 6-6, six, six, white, blue, uh, red, elemental uh, dinosaur cat, mutation. Pick one of the first four non-creature cards from your graveyard that cast, that cost 10 or less. Fetch that card. It gains full mana. No waiting, no must, no fuss. You cast it right away. Great card. Absolutely the most powerful mutation card. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, Trim is really good. Vadrock's better. Uh, and these cards, Song and Vadrock, will get stronger as we get new set releases before the next rotation next year. So... Right now, they took bumps, but they're still solid, and I highly recommend them. So, what is that? One in four, basically? Uh, I'll say one in four because of those are excellent. And Song of Creation is absolute must-have for all of your deck collections, so definitely get it. All right, we've got Bone Miser. Bone Miser is a chase card. And the reason I say that is because if you get Angie, if you can pull Angie, absolutely Angie and Subira are stupidly powerful. Now, with black, if you have Angie and Subira, Bone Miser is great because every time you discard a card, you draw a card. So it works real well with it. Um, I like him a lot for some of the discard stuff. He's up there. Uh, Creature Zombie Wizard, 14 for a black 6-6. Six, six. When you cycle or discard another card, if that card is a creature card, create two zombie tokens. If that card is a land card, create two gems to black. If that card is a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. So if it's a, if it's a non-creature, non-land card, so a spell then you get to draw those cards with it. He's flexible. We're going to be able to break him in more ways than one. Grab him if you can. Chromatic Orrery is a chase card. At the beginning of your turn, your colored mana bonuses become four until the end of turn. When you activate a loyalty ability, convert two gems to each color. I've said this is a chase card. It's still a chase card. This works best for Planeswalkers whose max output is four bo uh, mana bonuses. So if they've got a, four, a plus four to a mana bonus... Chromatic Ori gives all of them plus four, and then you're just a powerhouse. It doesn't matter from there. Fiery Emancipation, my baby, my precious, precious angel, 22 red enchantment. When a red creature you control deals combat damage to your opponent's planeswalker, deal X damage to your opponent's planeswalker. X is <laughs> three times creature's power. When you cast a red spell, deal damage to your opponent's planeswalker, equal to that spell's mana base. That's good. It's the creature damage that just makes this deck, this card, ridiculously strong. And then uh, I actually peer into the abyss. It's a chase card. Just get it. 21 mana, black spell card. Target player draws six cards. Then that player gains 30 loyalty and loses half their life. Round it up. This with Angel with Destiny. I haven't pulled Angel yet. I'm hoping to pull it today. But that card is amazing. That, that card is just absolutely studly. And then finally, Subira, Caravan, or Tolazidi. I can't say enough good things. The more I play with her, the more I think she might be the best creature in standard right now. And yes, I think she might be better than Quartzwood Crasher because of the combo decks that are just going off right now with her. 10 mana for a 3-4 Bravery Haste. Creature Human Shaman. When this creature attacks, your creatures with base power 3 or less gain Double Strike. Bam. And unblockable until end of turn. At the beginning of the combat on your turn, you may discard all cards from your hand. If you do, your creatures with base power 3 or less get plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn, and you draw 3 cards. There's so many different synergies that she works with. I find myself, any red deck I'm building, it's her, Angie, and Fiery Emancipation that are getting put into those builds. And that's just what I'm playing. And it just wins. It wins so fast and it's so strong. I can't stand it. So you got better than a one in three chance to pull an amazing card. This might be the set, depending on what cards you have out of it, to go after. And then in the Zendikar Rising set... Uh, I don't know a lot about all these ones. Scute Mob is one. I definitely like this one. Six. I don't have it. Three, three, insect, leader, insect token. Uh, leader, insect, at the beginning of your turn, if this creature gets X plus X plus X, X is equal to one plus the number of your land supports. So that one is a chase card for me. Warren Investigator, 10. Double Strike, three, three. When this creature deals combat damage to your opponent's Planeswalker, the first goblin card in your hand gains full mana. You know I love that. I love full mana. So those are always chase cards for me. And then my baby, Angel of Destiny, 21, double strike, 5, 9. While this on the battlefield, all creatures gain lifelink. At the end of your turn, if you have full life, your opponent's Planeswalker loses half of their life round. <laughs> Just, hey, and half. It's, I feel like Gallagher on stage. If you haven't, you don't know who that is, go Google it, young crunks. Looking at a, like a field of watermelons, it's the best. I'm trying to think if any of these others are worthwhile. I haven't played with them. I haven't gone after them. Leyline is not a chase card. L Linvala is not yet a chase card to me. Uh, Term Timber 
Symbiosis, 18 mana, land forming green spell card. Pick one of the first four different creature cards from your library, move that card to play under your control. Then if that creature's base cost is 11 or less, it gets plus six, plus six land forming. Create this token, which gets you plus three green per beginning of turn. This is the new quarter of Calling. I cannot wait to get this card. This is absolutely a chase card. Uh, Seagate Stormcaller. When this creature enters the battlefield, copy the first non-copy spell in your hand with a base mana cost 11 or less. Meh. That has full mana. That copy gains full mana. Disable the copy until the end of your turn. Uh, the more I, I want this, but the more I, I look at it, I'm not sure. I, it might be a chase card. I want it, but I'm not sure it's a chase card. Zagros is not a chase card. Uh, this one is. Uh, Philath, World Sculptor, 24 mana for a legendary green, red, 8-8 eight, eight, elemental. When this creature enters the battlefield, create X Force tokens. X is the number of green gems. Landfall green, target elemental creature you control gets plus X plus X. This effect can trigger up to two times per turn. X is the number of green gems. This is going to get dumb. This is just going to be dumb, dumb with uh, some of those the, the green conversion decks. Green conversion's back, by the way. Uh, some of the stuff that I've been researching and I'll share with you guys will detail that, but good lord, is this stuff nuts. So for me, I've got, so the way that I factor this, you'll notice I have Zagres, I have Linvala, and I have Leyline Tyrant. So for me, I look at the total numbers of the ones I want, which is, what did I say? One, two, three, four, five. Let's say five. So there's five out of eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there's five that I want out of 12. So that gives me the best odds of pulling a card here that I actually want, a chase card. So I'm going to buy my pack from here. So I've got uh, seven hundred or 670 or 660. Before I do that, I have packs to open. Let's go here and buy a premium pack and let's see if we can actually pull some new cards out of this. Come on, give me some good juju. Come on, give me some good juju. Give me the good juju. That's new. That's uncommon. I'll take it. That's not new. That's okay. So now I leave my, uh, another tip. If you just leave your hand on the screen, I used to tap like this to get all my stuff done. I don't do that anymore. I just hold it down. That's a new common. That's new. Yes. Maddening cacophony. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do it. Another one? Yes. Two rares in a row. You saw it, baby. Uh, thieving skydiver, seven mana, creature merfolk rogue, kicker seven. When this creature enters the battlefield, exile an opposing artifact support. Then create a copy of that card into play under your control. If that card is equipment support, this creature gains bravery. Cool. No, I was going to say, more new? <laughs> All right. Now, that was great. That made it worthwhile right here. But let's come on. New cards. That's not new. Not very excited. New? Yes! Squad Commander. Dude, this is a great pack. 15 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Core Warrior. When this creature enters the battlefield, create X Core Ally Tokens. X is the number of members in your party times two. Ew. That's a lot of text for a meh card. It All it has to do is say party. All right. Uh, Maddening Cacophony. 6 mana with a 10 kicker. Spell card. Destroy the top 8 cards of your opponent's library. Kicker 10. Destroy the top 8 additional cards of your opponent's library. Then you gain X loyalty. X is the number of spell cards in your opponent's graveyard. I kind of like that. That's actually going to be pretty fun. We looked at that, that, and that. What a, what a great pack. One common, one uh, uncommon, and then three rares. Baby, I'll take that all day long. All right. Nice. Good job. Well done. Top tier. And so that gives us the opportunity to go in here and do the one thing that we do want to do. We got one good pull. Angel of Destiny. I got five cards I want from here, but Angel of Destiny is definitely at the top. Let's go. Some, give me some good juju. Come on, guys. Let's go. I don't want to look. It's blue. I know it's blue. Seagate Stormcaller. Okay. I'm excited. This is kind of the one I, I you know, again, nine for a nine kicker, five, four, human wizard, wizardry. This creature gets plus one, plus one. When this creature enters the battlefield, copy the first non-copy spell in your hand with base mana cost 11 or less. That has full mana. That copy, it's such a long convoluted thing. We'll, we'll see. I, I think I can break this card. I'm going to try to break it. I'll update you in our next video. In the meantime, that has been... Oh, what's in the box? Now let's get to the gameplay. So today we're going to be spotlighting Jace, but he's actually going to be more of a support role. That's exactly what he is. He really helps smooth out your deck. So we're going to be doing something very fun with him in this build. I like this a lot. Nine mana for a three shield uh, Vanguard Jace. It's got a seven kicker. The support can't be reinforced, so it doesn't stack. It creates a new support on the board. Kicker seven. When you cast this card, create a copy of Jace Mirror Mage on the battlefield under your control. So very interestingly, I'll have you put two of him on the board. His plus one ability, once he's on the board, is pick one of the first two cards from your library. Fetch that card. Not draw. Fetch. Very important. And his zero ability is draw a card. If that card is not a vanguard card, it gains full mana. You know I like full mana. The card is disabled until the beginning of your next turn. Meh. 
This effect can't give mana to stored mana. Then the support loses X shield. X is that card's base mana cost. So whatever the card costs, it loses that in shield count. Don't try to store up so you can pull stuff down. You want to make sure if you find your card, get it with your secondary one. So I search with one and then pull with him. You'll see what I do. All right, so now, how do we break this? What I want to do is, I, I, had, a, I had a couple of ideas. I thought, oh, it's a support. And with the more supports we have, let's go create some tokens out of that. So I thought, all right, well, Sigil of the Empty Throne, 14 mana, two shield. It's an enchantment. When you cast a support other than this one, notice it just says support, summon one 144 angel with flying. Well, why is that important? Because we've got Legion Angel, 14 mana for a 6-5 flying leader, angel warrior. Uh, when this creature enters the battlefield, another target non-token creature you control gets plus 4, plus 4, gains flying, and gains the angel and warrior's subtype. Very cool. So I figured, let's go make some angel beatdown and go make this happen. It's going to be very exciting. The downside is, is that Jace, for whatever reason, does not trigger the sigil. So, uh, it took several builds and testing, and then I wound up coming back with the idea of like, look, we're in a land-forming, land-heavy support setup right now with Zendikar, so let's just go land crazy. Uh, Bright Climb Pathway, 9 mana for land-forming. Uh, land card. At the beginning of your turn, convert two white gems, or two gems to white. Landforming, create a Grim Climb pathway token, which is two gems to black at the beginning of your turn. So now you're thinking, well, that's right, the landforming, so you get double duty, you're going to get two angels, right? Wrong. Only when you cast a support, not summon, cast. Urgh. It's still powerful enough, though, without it, and it is what it is. Crag Corn pathway, same for red, and it gets another color. Uh, Animus Awakening, 5 mana. This is another rare. Converts a green gem to a one-turn countdown special with on match. Convert 5 gems to green. If there are 8 or more green gems, convert 5 gems to green in addition to that. Uh, Reclaim the Wastes. Green conversion is back, my friends. 8 mana for a spell card. Convert 7 gems to green. It should say that up front. Then if you pay the kicker, fetch the first card with landforming from your library. There's a certain sequence to use that and there's a certain time to not. If you got 2 of these, I'll show you. If they're stacked, then you do that. Uh, Ridge uh, River Glide Pathway, blue, and then I believe that one is red. And then this is Pilgrimage, just cheap supports, three mana. At the beginning of your turn, convert two gems to green, whatever. And then Migratory Greathorn rounds out our creature base. Twelve mana for a Reach Mutation, four, five, Beast. Uh, fetch the next land support from your library. Move that card to play under your control. So when I mutate this onto the leader, we go fetch a land support. What's more important than that, is that the angel feeds him. I was thinking originally he's going to feed the angel, but it's vice versa. Allow me to show you what it do. All right, and here we go. So what we want to do is we want to get Sigil out right away. It's the first thing we want to play because um, it'll make the rest of our tokens stay. All right, five mana there to start. We will definitely take that. I think we go here. Yep, we go there. Get the black drop. Got it out. Okay, cool. Now don't break it, Karn. We needs it. We needs it. Now, my notes on land farming. This took me a long while. I'm an idiot when it comes to this kind of stuff. Land farming works when you make a horizontal match. That means that when I swipe down this way or sideways this way is irrelevant. I thought it meant which way you swapped mattered. What, what it matters is, is these two here. I can bring this down and make a horizontal swap. Or I could, if it were a red gem here, I could move it over and it would match those three. That would make a horizontal swap. Does that make sense? So that's the way that you have to do it. I had, I don't know, maybe I'm an idiot, but I had such a hard time figuring that out. And eventually I got it. So we want to maximize. Now, it's only on the ones you direct swap to. So it does not make a difference. Like I'm going to go red here. It doesn't matter if I did it, like if I did a vertical swap, and then the card up top matched horizontally, that doesn't count. It only counts when you make the direct swap yourself. Catchatory. Another tip. I told you reclaim the wastes here, right? Have these stacked in this way. What I mean is if this was completely full, if these were completely full here, then what I would do is I would pay the kicker here. I would not pay the kicker there. And the reason is, is if these are all full, this would cast... I'd kick, this would get reduced, then this would cast, it would crush the board, I would not kick this one, fill this card up, then it gets cast. Ugh. 
But that's a lot of work. When are we ever going to do that? We're playing Tamiya. So when we hit our her, her third ability, excuse me, when we hit our third ability, uh, it, we're going to have some huge, huge jumps in our mana and our effectiveness. Uh, I'm going to go blue because we are going vertical here because, frankly, we don't need, um, we don't have any landforming going on. All right, so we've got the mutation down right away. We've got our conversion happening. All right, there's Animus Awakening. Let's go get that charge. That's another one, too, that I fit. Um, yeah, I think I'll go here. And let's see. Let's go there. Boom. How much do we get? So it's going to convert. I'm going to say confirm. And because it wouldn't have cast anyways, and I want to have a couple of them going, and I want some more land forming on the board. Uh, as many gems as we can. Our main objective is to get to our third ability here. All right, here we go. We should have something happen as of here. Let's see. Now, I don't want to use my green gems. I want to use my white and my blue, but we don't have any, so we're just going to have to go there and get some drop. Eh. Let's see what he does. We're just about to go off here. And it's good because we're under 50 hit points right now, or life points. All right, there he is. What else do we got here? Okay, we're still converting. Look at this. Good, good. Good, good, good. Good gravy. Let us go here. Actually, do we have him out now? So we want to actually cast this guy first. And yes, we want to go there. So now we've got our landfall. If we get into that. All right, cool. Do we want to reclaim here? Not now. We're just going to let it go. Now he hits. Now we give him boost. Makes him stronger with flying. We have land forming. And we got another support, which then beefed our angel up. And really what we we're just trying to do here is to give our, our deal some padding. All right. Now, this, this deck doesn't play any elimination. I didn't bother trying to find removal. Uh, it still needs some fine-tuning. This is literally just a first playthrough for me. Uh, I think I want to ditch that. Let's go here. We're going to do our third ability. Reclaim is good. Animus is good. Good, good, good. There's Jace. What's up, Jace? We've been waiting on you. This, this build's about you, bro. And we're actually going to put that up there. And we're not, we don't want to use green. We want to use blue and white to make our matches so that the green has a better chance of cascading or creating landfalls or whatever they're called. All right, so we're not going to do that. We just want to make our conversions. Um, I should have done that, not now. This time, I do want to confirm Jace. He takes that. We get our conversions. Lifelink in here would be good, too. I'm trying to figure out a way to do lifelink. I might want to cut one of the pathways and throw in a copy of um, what's his face of uh, the the mayor, so that we can get some life link going. Just to also cycle through the deck as quickly as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the second ability to freeze them down. We're going to use Jace here. We're going to confirm. We're going to see which cards we have here. Uh, we'll draw that because that'll give us some bigger creatures. We're also going to draw that. Um, we'll do that as well so we can get to some bigger creatures. And we want to have a good landfall here. Um, yeah, we're going to go here, there, everywhere, so that we're beefing him up. And that gives us 42. So if we don't die here, if we don't take six damage, we win. He powered him up good. That's what he used it on. Didn't do anything else. That's game. So this skirted by, but you can see how quickly this deck can recover. I think one of the pathways needs to come out. Um, I think what we need to add is something like, oh, I don't know. Uh, again, we can use Jace here. This is the way you use Jace. You first survey what you want. You cannot power up these, okay? So then I would use my second ability. If that card was something I wanted, then I would draw that card against full mana. <laughs> and I wind up dying. But you see there that I actually would have won. <laughs> There's a little bit of a misplay there, but... 
it winds up putting that card in my hand. I took damage for drawing. I would have won. You saw it. It's no big deal. I'm not going to cut this. I'm going to let it in. Somebody once commented on me saying, I like that you leave your losses in so you can learn how to play from them. So typically what I do with it is I'll go seek out the, the creature that I want to draw, and then I'll power that up and have it in full hand. And you'll, it, I go dig to find my Jaces, and I'll have five or six of them on the board, and it's ridiculous how powerful that is. But it's not the most powerful build. Let me show you what that build looks like right now. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. I literally just played through testing this next deck for you in a, a Trials event, and I got the pack, the Zendikar pack. This is the first card I opened from this. Agadim's Awakening, six mana, 18 stored mana, land-forming black spell card. Return the first three different creatures with base mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield under your control. X is this card's stored mana. Oh my god! <laughs> land-forming, create an Agadim with the Undercrypt token. We'll figure out what that is. I got another new one! Yes! Confounding Conundrum, eight mana. Uh, blue enchantment, landfall, blue, draw a card. When your opponent matches five or more gems, your blue mana bonus is increased by three for two turns. Each of these effects can trigger up to two times per turn. Anything else new? No, that's okay, man. Two brand new cards. A mythic and a, a rare. Look at this. Agadim's uh, Endercrypt. I'm assuming it's three black. Is that what it is? Okay, so at the beginning of your turn, convert three gems to black. Uh, your black mana bonus is increased by one until end of turn. That's insane. That's really good. That is really, really good. I cannot wait to play with that. Yes, I'm excited. Okay, so this deck is running under... Sarkin, it's called Jace Fires, the standard build. So, you already know what Jace does. Now we enter Fires of Invention. I think this is quickly becoming one of my favorite cards to play again. 13 mana, red, 4 shield, enchantment. Whenever you cast the second card of your turn, disable all cards in your hand until end of turn. At the beginning of your turn, reduce the cost of each card in your hand by X until end of turn. X is the number of gems of your Planeswalker's colors. Works really good with trade color walkers, really well with two color walkers and mono walkers it struggles with unless you're playing green conversion which then you don't need any of that so what are we going to do with this i want all the permanents for free so i want fire emancipation on the board so i can do triple damage on my creatures i want song of creation so i can draw those cards and then i want to discard those cards so that if i can't cast them they're just going into my graveyard why because I'm going to use Eerie Ultimatum, 23 mana, return the first six different non-spell cards from your graveyard to play under your control, then exile this card, swaggy, and while I'm doing that with, how am I going to get stuff into the graveyard? Great question, Gyruda, Doom Patrol, or Doom of Depth, 16 mana, Don't it's 8-8, eight, eight. when it enters a, a battlefield, destroy the top eight cards from each player's library. I'm not worried about the companion because it doesn't matter. It's Goblin Goliath, 19 mana for an 8-7 creature of a Goblin Mutant. When this creature enters the battlefield, create X Goblin Tokens. X is your red mana bonus. Two turn, red, your other creatures get double strike until end of turn. Then create two goblin, two more Goblin Tokens. Why are we doing this? Warstorm Surge! 14 mana for red enchantment. When a token creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to your opponent's Planeswalker. This effect can trigger up to four times per turn. This isn't broken in this build. Um, I'm actually testing it with some other builds. But for right now, this is a placeholder. I want to spotlight Warstorm Surge. I think there's going to be some fun to be done with it. But we'll get to that when we get to that. And then we want to create multiple Goblin Goliath drops and stop their creatures from attacking us. 12 mana for Thassa's Deep Dwelling. Enchantment God, at the, uh, as long as your Devotion to Blue is 6 or more, your first creature gets plus 6 plus 5 and is unblockable. Not really playing it for that. At the end of your turn, you may exile target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under your control. If you do, disable the last opposing creature until the beginning of your turn. So it helps slow their creatures down, but it brings them back to the board, gets a bunch more tokens as well, and we go from there. And then we just play Ruinous to kind of mop up the board if they've gotten ahead on us. And it goes from there. This deck takes a lot of damage. I, I, It's not a tier one build. I tried using it in, like I said, the Trial of the Plains. It got five wins. It could not get me my sixth win. On the top node, oh, we're going to fight Koth. So this is going to be good. I bet this is Nalthazar's Koth build. Let's go face it and see if our deck's better. Come on. So, for the record, I ran three. Uh, there's the Trial of the Plains, whatever it is. There's three nodes on top, three to the right three at the bottom or three charges on the bottom and then three charges on the legendary node which is ridiculous it's almost impossible to beat that unless you have a tier one deck i played this deck it took three out of the top three uh builds so the top node i got three wins in a row on the secondary node uh where it's it's legendary where they can actually oh, there's a freebie let's do that 
We have enough here. Actually, let's do the Now, we want to get these out. We want to get Jace out as quickly as possible so you can start drawing through your deck as quickly as possible. So we're just going to get him out, not worry about getting the secondary objective. If we can, great, but not really worried about it. Um, on the second node to the right, the right node, uh, we wound up getting... Uh, let's first go do this. Let's draw. We won one out of those three. We got pound, pwned on those ones. I'm going to take that. And on the bottom node, I wound up getting all three of those. No, I got two of those objectives. I lost one, but I got two of them. And then I wound up going uh, one. Uh, I didn't win any of the legendary ones, so I wound up having to actually use my a different deck on that in order to make it work. Okay, we want Song. We're going to go charge up Song now. Do we want Ruinous? No, we want another one of those out. We want as many of those out as we can. We'll throw that there. We're good from there. We are not going to cast that right now. We're going to mute it just so that we can make sure that it goes off. And, yeah, we'll go there. All right, so I'm going to need, I think, six mana on the next one at least. Let's see if I can get six mana here. See what we got to get it to fire. All right, so what do we have here? We're not going to need Ruinous. That's obviously not going to be needed here. We need five mana to start going off. So let's go draw a card first, or let's go Surveil. Let's take Ruinous out, because we don't want it to stop our hand. We want to get to an Eerie as quickly as possible. Uh, we need five mana now. And do you see anything that is my color scheme? Ugh, I don't. Goodness gracious. All right, so we're going to mute these again. Oop, we're going to mute that. Now we're going to go there. And now that's charged, but we should be good for the next one. Nope, he's got it. All right, Koth, let's see, Kothy boy. What you got? Okay, there's him. Not even worried about it. Don't even worry about it, Darius, because we're a mile high, and I'm the scariest. Let's do this out. Let's draw a card or fetch a card. Let's get eerie. That's what we want. Are we going to have enough juice to get us through all of that? I would rather not. And let's mute it so we can get this thing humming. Humming, 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 humming. All right, there we go. So now, <laughs> well, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's actually do that. So when you have song on the board, this is what's interesting. If you have Song on the board, and you actually uh, have two Jaces in a row, you can do that, and it winds up putting three on the board. So as you can see now, I have three of these bad boys, four of them now total. So we're going to have some fun. Let the fun ensue. And this is strictly just to see what we're going to be doing. Look at, this. Look at that beast of a roll he had. What a turn you had. Oh, my goodness. Aren't you so strong? Let me show you something. All right, so we're going to go get fires, because that's really what we want to get rolling. We're going to go get uh, Ruinous, because that's what we want to get rolling. We're going to go get uh, Goblin Goliath. And we're going to go get uh, Warstorm Surge. All right, so now we want to cast this. Um... So we're going to have to ditch, we'll ditch Goliath. So what you want to do is check your graveyard, see what you have in there. Fire, Song, Goblin Goliath. So I have a Goblin Goliath and a Fiery Emancipation in there already, right? So I'm going to throw Goblin, because I already have one. And I want to draw two cards and give full mana to my Ruinous, but i got to have a nice good swap here. So my options are, if I take the black, I might get a blue drop. If I take the green, I'm going to get some. I'm just not going to get that red. I'd like to get a double drop there if I could, but I don't see anything down here that'll let that drop. So I think I've got to try to risk it for the biscuit here. So we're going to go black and hope we get a blue. Look at that. It's exactly, it's exactly what we designed here. It's exactly how we drummed it up. That's exactly what we wanted to see happen. Now I should draw two cards, and hopefully I get this eerie off. Bam, just enough. <sighs> or this ruinous, I should say. I want to thank my mom and my dad for really raising me to be a, a strong soul. <laughs> so now we have Fiery Emancipation on the board. And because our Goblin Warlord here uh, it has haste, he's actually doing triple damage, quadruple damage over there to Mr. Mr. Busterface. So now we got Gyruda, 
And what we want to do is, again, we're going to go fetch. What's our next card? Uh, we're going to go get Warstorm. Yeah. We're going to go get, uh, let's see. We'll take a uh, Fiery. Let's, we'll go another one. We're going to go get a, what are we getting? Come on, don't freeze. Oh, you scared me. Eerie is what we really want. So that's enough. So now we have enough to go in here and get that done. And we can go ahead and see what our next card will be. We don't need a fire, so we can take that out. Toss it. And... Uh, yeah, we don't even need another fire emancipation. So let's just do that. And let's see if we can get a really solid drop here. I'd like to get a double drop if I could. So, yep, right there. Green. Bam. Red. Bam. Goliath. Draw two cards. Get another Eerie out. Garuda hit the board. So now we're bringing out another six items. Hopefully we get a Thassa here so that we can uh, make that happen. Bam, bam. It doesn't matter. That's game. That's game. Oh, it's not game. I thought I had him. <laughs> I needed one more, one more uh, goblin to hit the board. I needed to drop that goblin there. All right. Anyways, so that's how this deck works. You can see clearly... That it is a powerful deal. I'm not going to bore you with the details. There's so much more we can do and just have some fun. I mean, literally, uh, you know what? Let's go draw a card and give it full mana. Why not? There's fires. Let's go. Let's. And actually, what you should do, too, and I made a mistake on that last time, is I should have destroyed one of my Jaces so he goes back into the graveyard. That way, when I do my next Eerie, it pulls one back out for me. I didn't do that. Let's give everybody double strike. Let's just Let's just have fun and win the game. How about that? How about that? We don't even need to swing. That's how powerful this deck is, my friends. Nixel, I appreciate you. It was a solid effort, my friend. You did solid damage. What I need to figure out how to do and what this needs some tweaking to do is to be able to get some life gain into it. So if you have a better build that you find works that actually gives that life link and allows us to generate some more life as we're going through it, let me know. Uh, you've noticed my video output has been a little bit lighter lately. And the reason for that is, is I've actually taken on a new big client we're working with right now and it's just devouring all of my time. But I am really committed to helping you out with this. I need your help though. If you want me to continue to do these videos, I need to see engagement. I need to see comments, I need likes, so the algorithm feeds it to other folks. And most importantly, join our party, subscribe. That way when we get notifications and I get new videos out, you will be sure not to miss them. And you can see some of the great new things we're doing inside of Zendikar Rising. It's amazing, some of the stuff that's going on right now. Green conversion is amazing. I have so many things I want to share with you. So many decks I'm testing right now. What are you most excited to see next? Comment below. Until our next quest, my friends. Swords out.